All right, what's up, Blender Savages? So today I'll show you how to make uh, this little uh, city here and then use a focus on the camera to focus on a building. Uh, very easy to make. Looks uh, very complex, but trust me, it's not so bad. All right, so let's get started. So first things first, we're gonna get rid of this cube right here. X key, delete, there we go. And then we're gonna bring in a grid, a mesh grid, shift A, mesh, and then go down a grid. It's just like a plane. Except it's already subdivided, so just bring in a grid right there. There we go. And let's make it bigger. Let me go to the camera view. I think I'll make it eight times bigger. S8, enter. Yeah, that looks good. All right. Now I'm going to top view. Let me zoom out a bit. Let me take it to edit mode. Tab key for edit mode. There we go. And I'm going to subdivide these uh, one time. Right click, subdivide. Here we go. Uh, so I'm going to decide what are my city blocks and streets with this grid uh, pattern that I have here. So I'm going to go over here to face selection first. And I'm going to loop select my streets. So whatever I want to be a street. Maybe I want a street to be there at the end. Maybe I don't want a street there. Uh, to loop select, you're going to hold down the alternate key, ALT, right next to the space bar. And when you're holding that down, you're going to left click on an edge that's perpendicular to the direction you want to loop select. Say, for instance, I want to select this whole edge right here. Oh, sorry, this whole row of faces. So you want to click on this edge right here. There we go. Not this edge. This is like 50-50. Or nothing at all and not this one for sure it's gonna get you that one so I want to get that one there perpendicular and then you want to decide how big you want your city blocks to be so that's gonna be a street right there you may want to see block to be uh, three of those grid marks there so I'm gonna hold on alt and shift for loop select alt sorry for uh, multi loop select there we go maybe over here I'll skip four one two three four bam there we go so I got four in there three in there you know try three again there we go and maybe I'll, I'll make also make this one four go way out here or maybe i don't want that to be a street maybe i want it to be buildings but we'll make it a street so i want it to be a city block all right so then to deselect it just left click it again while holding out alternate shift all right so i got directions i uh, got the streets going east west let me get some streets going uh, north south and let's go with the street right here there we go so that's a city block right there those are city blocks and maybe let's go about right there uh, a little wider and then we're going to go out here with uh, this one right here there you go big white block right there all right so those are going to be my streets so now i'm going to do an alternate select sorry an inverse selection inverse selection if i go over here to select and click on control i or select right here invert i it's going to select the opposite or everything that's not selected there you go so that's what i want i want the city block selected and it was easier to decide what you want to be the streets first and then do this part. All right, so I'm gonna leave those there selected and I'm gonna bring up a, an add-on in here so I can uh, create Gribble to make this a city. Gribble, Gribble, the little small components that you see in uh, usually in Star Wars films. So let me show you an example. All right, I think it's pronounced uh, Gribble, Gribble, G-R-E-E-B-L. So in Star Wars, you see um, these large massive ships with all these little uh, buildings, compartments, components on there. Makes it look a lot bigger than it really is. Uh, what they did in reality in the original Star Wars, they got a bunch of parts from different uh, model kits and just put them together. And you can create all kinds of stuff with them. Uh, here's an example that in 3D that we will use here in Blender. All right, so now i got to activate that add-on. And it's not called uh, Greeble in Blender. It's called something else. I think it's called this combo view later. So let's go here to edit preferences. Let me notice that I still have those spaces are selected. And then click on add ons on the left side. So after you go to edit preferences, you get this blender preferences window. Click add ons on the left panel. And I'm going to type in here DIS. And there it is. This combo view later. This combo view later. And make sure you activate that. So there should be a check mark right there inside that box. So just click in there. And then once you uh, add the check mark, it's activated. So you got to just close it. Close it. And now we're going to bring in that tool. It's going to be Shift A. And there it is down there. This combo view later. Click on that. And you get a new menu here. There it is. Let me drag this up. All right. So minimum height, minimum max. Uh, minimum height and maximum height. So this is how short uh, you're willing to have the buildings be. Oop, just lost it. Shift A. There we go. So uh, 0.2. That's uh, to be, be a 0.2 blender units for the height of your buildings. Uh, 0.4 would be the tallest building you have there. So if you want shorter buildings, you can bring this down. Let me try 0.15. 
And then for that one, I guess I can leave it at 0.4. So then that'll be the, um, the range of the buildings within that height range. And then minimum taper, uh, max taper, that'd be the, uh, the top of them, how much uh, they taper off. They're not gonna be direct, they're not gonna directly go up. They will start from down here. They'll go up and then at the top, they won't touch. So you gotta separate them, but they'll be touching at the bottom. Uh, you wanna leave this one up to four so you have more variety. So that means you can have up to four uh, buildings coming out of one of these uh, squares here, one of those grid marks there, one of the faces. Uh, to use this tool, you definitely need faces. The more faces you have, the more variety you'll get. And do that, that's if you uh, decide to create the buildings that you want to bring in there. And then this for materials, we'll create all materials. So the only changes here are going to be uh, minimum height and maximum height. Make sure, uh, make protrusions are activated. They're going to protrude out of there. Then hit OK. Bam, there we go. I got a city already. There you go, New York, New York, big city of dreams. Let's see. And there they are touching at the bottom. And then at the top, that's the taper right there, so they're not touching there. Nice, zero for camera view. Cool, so you already got your city there. All right, so you're halfway there. So you could have made this by hand, but it's easier not to. Uh, notice now you have two pieces of mesh. You have your plane there, and then you have this, uh, this combobulator mesh that we just created from there. All right, so make sure that your this combobulator mesh is selected. And now let's uh, add some windows in here. So we're gonna go to shading, and we'll use uh, some node shaders to create all the panels there for our city. Here we go, let me select rendered here. All right, make sure this combo be later mesh is selected. And then I'm gonna go right over here into new. There we go. And I'm gonna bring in a brick texture. Shift A, search, brick texture. And we're gonna use this brick texture to uh, create a grid for our buildings. You know, when you look at old skyscrapers, uh, you do notice a grid on there from all the window panels and stuff like that. Uh, they're usually not brick patterns, so we'll change the offset in a bit, but let's bring in more shaders in here for our setup. I also got a brick texture there, and those are the two colors right now that I have for my bricks. So let me get shift A, search. We're gonna bring in mapping, put over here on the left side, and connect the purple to purple here. And I'm gonna bring texture coordinate, search texture coordinate. There we go, and connect the generator here to vector. All right, and the reason I got mapping here is so later I can adjust the brick pattern to how I want it. Uh, there's some settings here, but this gives me more variety. All right, I don't want to go with these two colors here because this is just just a uh, plain boring solid colors for the brick. Some will be white, some will be gray. The mortar will be black. So what I can do is bring in a mix shader, Shift A, Search, Mix Shader, and just put that here. Now I can use uh, principal BSCF shaders to create my materials for uh, the colors for my brick pattern. We'll bring in another principled BSCF shader. You could also just duplicate the one that's in there right now, principled BSCF, there we go. Uh, the one on top, that's gonna be the color for your bricks. And the one on the bottom will be the color for your mortar, the filling inside the bricks. All right, so I'm gonna put this one right here in between those two, there we go. So now the surface color, uh, material output is connected uh, shader here for the mix shader. And then I'm gonna connect uh, this one here to the bottom, the brick shader there for the mix shader. There we go. And then the brick texture right here, I'm going to connect right here, factor, over to factor right here. And then I'm also going to click on factor again, and I'm going to connect it over here to displacement. That gives it more of a 3D look. All right, so I don't got much going on right now. Oh, there we go. Now we're starting to see something. There we go. And notice it looks indentated. Look, there's an indentation, and that's thanks to connecting there the displacement one as well. All right, so let me pick a colors here for my brick. So this top one right here, that's uh, gonna be the big block colors. So we go with the gray color. There we go. Now you wanna make it reflective, make it metallic. Reduce uh, roughness there, wanna make it shiny. Cool. And then this is for the, the filling there. So I'm gonna go with like a blue color. I'm gonna go with blue. There we go, make it shiny too. There we go. If you wanna make it um, glow, you can actually add an emission. Shader, emission, and they can use that one instead. Let me disconnect that one from there, and we'll put, oh, and we'll connect this one right there. And then I can make this one like a glowing color. And then the strength, let's go with five, not too strong. All right, so notice the mortar looks humongous. So we're gonna adjust that over here in the brick texture. 
Let um, me go in here. Uh, well, first, I want to get rid of that brick pattern. I want to have more of a, of a grid pattern. So I'm going to reduce the offset, either go all the way down to zero or all the way up to one. Either of those are, are going to work. It'll give you a similar effect. It just shifts over the, uh, the lines there, as you can see. But it'll definitely give you, I mean, same for top view. You can see the brick pattern here on the top view. See in 0.5%, uh, you can see the, the brick pattern. And you can get ready again, it's slightly off. You know, it's not too bad. All right, so I'm going to squeeze it in here. And then a change, how often you see the pattern, I'm going to increase the scale right here. See, and now it's looking more like window panels. Uh, you only see the brick pattern here up top at 7. And on the sides, you just see lines going up and down. And then you're going to get some of these too for the big blocks, uh, big bricks. So I'm going to go over here to uh, rotation. I'm going to rotate X or Y, any of those two by 90. And it'll flip this so that that brick pattern there that you see on top of you, the grid will be on the side. So let me change, oh, rotation right here, change this one to 90. Cool, so there it is. So it's on this side now. Uh, the other side is going to be um, like flat like that. You'd have to bring in uh, another a brick texture try to adjust the other side but i'm okay with that zero for camera view uh, there we go more our size i can try to make this uh thinner here uh let's try it out so dot zero two let's try dot zero one and nice and thin there uh the glow effect is cool here but i don't like it too much because it just kind of brightens everything up it gets rid of some of the black let me try to reduce it see if that works it looks a little neater, so you can leave it there. If not, you can um, always use the principal BSCF shader. And this one won't glow right here. There we go, but the emission one will definitely uh, give it a glow. There we go, so I like this one a little better there. And you can always change the color. Maybe go with green or red. Who also got it colored there? Uh, you're playing at the bottom, your streets. Uh, you're probably not gonna see it, depending on how you angle your camera, how you position it. Let me go back over here to layout. And render it over here. There we go. But if you want to color your plane, go ahead and select it. And then go down here, or your grid. And then go to new, and then you can give it a color as well. Let's make it dark gray. So the road is uh, dark gray, almost black. There we go. Roughness all the way up. There we go. All right. Do for camera view, see what the camera sees. All right. Now I'm going to bring an HDRI file for my, uh, my background. For my world environment and then some of that light there will bounce off of these buildings as well so i'm going to go to hdrihaven.com one of my favorite sites hdrihaven.com all right go to hdris and we'll look for an outdoor scene with the sunset oh this one's cool it's nighttime all right that'll make it look scarier so i'm going to go with this one right here all right and then i'm going to try to hide this stuff down here i'll show you guys how all right, 4K, that one's fine with me. Let it download, and it's downloading. Let me click it again. There we go, now it's downloading. And once it's done loading, I'll bring it into Blender over here. All right, so that HDRI file is, is uh, done downloading. So I'm gonna go over here to the World tab, and I'm gonna click on this yellow ribbon right here. Next color, and then environment texture, and then open, and that's in the downloads folder. I'm gonna bring it in from there. Just wait for the load. All right, uh, I think it's this one right here. Double click it in and let it load. This purple looks pretty cool too. All right, here we go. All right, let me zoom out of there. Go on some of that sky in the background, not these trees, because it doesn't look like a city. I'm trying to go for this dystopian sci-fi, cool, trendy city. That looks like Tron, I like that too. All right, so I'm going to go over here uh, to shading again. All right, let me zoom out of there. Uh, right now, the shady, uh, the shader editor is for mesh objects. So I want to switch this over to the world, this right here. So I'm going to click on object and change the world right here. All right, let me zoom into that. So if you notice, there's my HDRI file, background, world output. And that's the output it's putting out over here inside this, this, uh, this window there. So I want to be able to manipulate that. So let me go over here to uh, object again. I'm actually gonna use these right here. I'm just gonna drag select these two. I'm gonna copy them, Control C copy. All right, now I'm gonna go over here to world. I'm gonna drop them over here, Control V to paste. There we go. I'm gonna connect vector here to vector there. 
Cool. There you go. See, I already uh, already got some changes there because the values over here are already different. So let me bring these down. Default setting. There we go. All right. Zero. All right. So before I start adjusting the uh, the mapping settings here, see that? Bam. Uh, first, I want to adjust my camera. I want to decide what building I want to uh, focus on. So I'm gonna go back over to layout, and I'm just gonna pick a building from here. I think I'll decide to focus on. So I'll rotate my view around. Maybe uh, this building right here. Which one should I choose? Uh, one of these buildings can be like the evil corporate headquarters of whoever is really my dystopian city here. Let me get one with the with the blue roof. Uh, somewhere in the center, center top view. Maybe this one right here. All right. Cool. So this will be my uh, my big evil building. So make sure you're this combulated. This combo belated mesh is selected, the, the Greeble. I'm in the tacky for edit mode. Now I'm gonna click on this one right here, the one I wanna select. And then I'm gonna hit the L key, leave my mouse there. So I can individually select that building. And I'll make it a little taller, SZ for scale. There we go. Make it taller than all the other buildings there. It's gonna stick out the bottom, but that's okay. Nobody can see that. I could even hit a GZ and pull it up. All right, so now maybe I wanna make the top of it here a little thinner. S for scale, pull it inward. And DZ, go up a little higher again. And it's the tallest building, yeah. Get a, you can imagine that's maybe it's like a, a big uh, uh, window there for the uh, VIP suite up there where the big ballers live in. The, uh, the dystopian dictator ruler of this nation, this city state here. All right, so now I'm going to hit the L key on that building again. Now I'm going to separate these from all the other ones. So I'm going to hit P, P for pole, P as in Pablo. And you get this menu right here, separate. I'm going to click on selection. And there you go. Now that's a separate object there. And now I know to focus on this building there because it's uh, it's got that red orange color there. Let me go back to object mode. And there we go. Let me just click on this one here. And I just want to pick an angle here that I like. Not much building, so one in the background. Maybe that's cool there. Maybe this one. Uh, maybe this, this looks cool right here. I'm going to hit uh, control alternate zero. Make this my new camera view. Control alternate zero. There we go. Let me click on my camera frame here. Let me hit G for grab. Pull it up. There we go. And I still want it to look like the tallest. So let me hit R, X, X. Rotate my camera up a bit. G, Z, pull it down. And there we go. So now it looks like the tallest building there. I'll try to center it some more. All right. But I don't like how my HDR file is looking. You know, I got these uh, mesquite trees back there. It doesn't look very dystopian. Well, maybe mesquites are dystopian. But I'm going to go over here to shading and make sure world here is selected. I'm going to hit the zero key for my camera view up here in the 3D viewport shader. All right. Now I'm going to play around with these settings right here in the mapping and mapping shader so I can adjust the uh, the background there. So rotation here, I can adjust the uh, on it on the adjust the background there on the Z axis. I want to get some uh, some stars. Where are the stars? Let me see. They're over there. Stars are everywhere. All right. Zero for camera view again. And you kind of got a sunset going on over there. You can reduce the strength of your HDRI file by uh, using this, which is the same as that right there. See, strength, strength. You can make it 0.1. It's going to dim it down a lot. Cool. There's like a city out there in the distance. Uh, 0.5. Then you can see little things like that that you probably wouldn't have noticed. All right. Then I'm going to go over here to the location for Z. I'm going to pull it down or pull it up. Let's see. There we go. Now I can see the stars. Cool. Maybe I want to keep going up, get more stars. I feel like I'm, uh, I'm flipping over. Oh, the Milky Way? No way. Let me go over here, rotation. There we go. Let's get some more of them stars. Uh, you can even, I don't want to go up too high because then they kind of get uh, stretched out a bit. Right there. And you can even go to scale. And you can try to scale it out. Let's see. That's along the Z. And you get some more there. Make sure it doesn't look too stretched out. So let me try scaling the Y. Let me try the X. Well, I guess uh, now it looks like it was earlier. So just the Z there. I should have expected that. And what happened? Now it's too dark. Let me undo Control Z. Control Z. Control Z. Oh, the one. It was supposed to be one. There we go. Cool. All right. That looking. That's looking cool right there. All right. Back to layout like that view there all right 
So I want to focus on this building right here. So select your camera, make sure you're in the camera frame. Actually, you don't have to be in your camera frame. Let me do this, one of these, there we go. And I want to focus on that building. Also, this light source here is still giving me light. Zero for camera view. I can leave it there. Maybe I want to put it over there. G for gram, let's put it on this side. Uh, maybe I want to duplicate it. So it's a couple light sources on that side over there. It's all good, however you guys want to do it. Or maybe I want one in front of this building here. Let me bring one over there too. And I made A to select all. And that's my building there. So select the camera there, Shift D. And it was one of these over here. So for camera view. There we go. Cool. All right. Let me uh, do one of these. And select my camera. There's my camera. There's my camera. Now I'll go over here to the properties panel. Click on camera data. Camera uh, uh, data there. Activate depth of field. Go ahead and open that. Scroll down a bit and open up viewport display. Click on viewport display there and activate limits. There we go. You see this uh, this plus sign there, this axis there. You're going to adjust it so it's on this building, the building that you decided to focus on. If it's hard to find your building, you can go ahead and color it a different color or you can click on it. Hold on shift and then click on your camera and then the building will be red. There we go. But nothing's going to happen in your building. It's not the active object unless you start making changes. But this way, um, at least you got a highlight there because I know it uh, looks like all the other buildings. All right, so I can see the um, that cross there, that plus sign. I'm going to go here to focus distance. I'm going to decrease it so I can get closer to my building so I can get the get that plus sign there in my building because that's where I want to focus. Cool. So that's my focus point right there. If you're thinking select a uh, focus object, that's not going to happen. Watch me put the plus sign way over there. Focus object, and that's that object right there. And see, didn't even uh, focus on it. Still way back there somewhere. So I'm gonna turn that off and try to focus it back over here. There we go. So somewhere inside of it. All right. So now that I got the plus sign there inside the building, or it has to be, it could be near. It doesn't have to necessarily be inside of it. Zero for camera view. And now I'm gonna focus uh, to that. To do that, to change the f-stop right here. Let me bring it down. It's gonna start blurring everything else. Let me bring it down way lower. And there we go. That's already happening. There you go. The other buildings in the background look blurrier. These are blurry here, so the focus is there. There, cool. Let's go to ambient occlusion there. Activate some bloom. There we go. All right, maybe um, go back to world right here. Maybe want to jack up the strength on the on my sky there. Maybe want to brighter, uh, too bright. Uh, maybe you don't want to go above one. Try point nine. Let's go back to point one. Let's try point two. Point three. I guess point five was fine. All right. So there we go. Um, the background's already blurry. The HRI file that has nothing to do with the uh, the focus there. It's just because we scaled it up over here in the shading. We scaled up the Z, so that's why it looks a little blurry there. You want to put it back, just hit the one, and then uh, it's still a little blurry. But it's mainly um, from that, not the uh, not the focus here. But you can play around with the focus here some more. See how much blur you want around your other buildings. Uh, the blades right here, that's uh, see how they look kind of blurry. You can actually try to make them to triangles, by increasing this number here. Now they kind of look like triangles. So it depends uh, what the, what look you're going for. A little blurry there. Rotation. Uh, usually I don't mess with those. Usually just these two right here that you would mess with, and you don't really got to play around with the other ones. All right, so let me get my image here, F12. <clears throat> It's already looking uh, realistic, very scalable. You can make your own little ladle town and uh, use the focus up on it to make it look larger than life. And there we have it. There's our tall building there, focused. Everything else kind of blurry. It looks cool, almost looks like a little miniature there. I like it. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like to support the channel, you can always uh, give me a like, give me a comment, give me a high five. Give me a share, uh, subscribe, anything helps, anything helps, especially watching the video, watching the whole video, that definitely helps. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Take care.